Anybody would like to stress a question to George Bocaro? Okay, so if that's the case, we give the word to Dr. Shu on robotic varicocelectomy. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Dr. Bocaro. Uh, this morning you presented all the different countries that have known about our society and the uh, medical surgical technique we're using robot. You can add Taiwan and China to that because I uh, presented the status to, to them. So um, the topic I'm presenting today is robotic subinguinal vehicle selectomy. Um, this is um, some of the, a lot of the stuff I already presented in the past three um, meetings or four meetings, I should say. So I'm going to go through them, but I have something new for y'all this year. Um, vehicle cell is a is a disease process, or or a, I should say an anomaly process that uh, men may have. And then uh, from a urologic standpoint, we have several approaches to. So approaches to uh, to treat them, whether it been a high ligation immuno approach or some immuno microscopic approach, and um, the reason why I was involved taking care of patients with vehicle cell was actually back in 2001 when we first had the first generation dimension intuitive robot. We didn't know what to do with it. Um, it took us two hours to get uh, position for for prostatectomy, and we ended up failing the, the procedure. First 50 cases we had open. So I started tackling easier cases. That's why I started doing vehicle cell, do the intro, uh, intro uh, peritoneal approach to learn how to use the robot better. This is the actual, actual first case we did back in 2001. You can see even time back then, we didn't even know what to do. So we're learning different ways to do this. So this is how I got involved with vehicle cell. Now, of course, um, from the urologic literature <coughs> in adults, um, we recognize that microsurgical surgical or vehicle selectomy is much better technique um, it's a better outcome, it's outpatient, it preserves the testicular artery and lymphatics better, and a lot less complications. <coughs> so, um, but it's been performing with a microscope, which has been around since 1970s. Um, obviously, uh, Parveen has talked about uh, microsurgical surgery where there's tremor, uh, two dimensional view. Uh, when I first learned how to do, when I tried to do the microsurgical surgery, it's like doing the laparoscopic surgery. Versus a robot, it's everything in two dimensions is quite challenging. If someone without microsurgical um, training shouldn't be doing that probably. Anyways, um, so back in 2005, 2006, I started thinking about using robot for various different surgeries other than prostate. Um, one of the things we talked about, or we, did, we thought about is doing it for a vehicle cell. So at that time, um, we're still a patient, just like we do with microscopic approach, and deliver their spermatic work. And instead of robot, this is the first case we did with the robot. I think that's the second generation robot at the time. And we dissected out the uh, artery, the vas, and ligate all the veins. This is the video. I'm gonna just uh, this. Is, I'm gonna skip right through it. This, this is pretty. A lot of, a lot of, yeah, this is real speed. <laughs> so. Um, we uh, first reported this in 2006, um, and just like uh, Parviz was saying that um, everybody laughed at me at the time, um, we had, we'll send this to Asian Journal of Reproduction. Reproduction. Um, it was uh, quite interesting how nobody liked it back then, they still don't like it. Anyways, at the time I did 12 cases in each arm, microscopic versus, uh, excuse me, 11 cases, microscopic versus robot, and then uh, the time was pretty quite comparable. All patients had to resume activity the next day, and there was no difficulty identifying or isolating the vast differential vessels, the short learning curve, no tremor, obviously, three dimensional. And um, we're going to get these some vasectomy reversals. And up to date, I've uh, done about 62, probably a little more. I haven't updated my data lately. Um, pretty much uh, the time is dropping below one hour. That's from skin to skin. Um, now, one of the difficulties I have had doing this surgery is that not being a microscopic sur surgeon, um, we cannot identify the vas vasal arteries that well. Okay, that was the biggest criticism I had in the past four meetings. This guy said, "Well, you can do this with a robot, but you can't identify the artery like we do because one of you guys can identify the artery very, very easily." So I said, "I gotta find something else. Can we do? Can we dim the light down a little bit on the next part? Any possible? No, not really." Okay, so this ICG is being around since the 60s. Basically, it's a fluorescence. So, I basically incorporate Firefly during my, my cases. Um, 
using ICG. And then, um, so when I look at this, I say, where's the artery? I don't know where it is. I have no idea. So, once I use the ICG, it takes about 10 seconds. And I can see the artery. I don't have to look for it. You don't have to be a microscopic surgeon to do this. I did about 12 cases. This, uh, this paper is in press right now. We're using this technology for the robotic micro, uh, vertical cell selectomy. Not in the US. Everybody rejected. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a pretty novel concept. And what I really like is after I finish, you always want to make sure you took all the vein. So after you finish, you uh, look around, you say, any more veins, any more veins? You say, I don't know, I don't know. So you give someone ICG and you look at it. There's no more veins to be tied. Okay? So you don't have to be microscopic trained to do this now. <laughs> anyway, so what, with this results, we have been able to produce, reproduce our procedures much, much better. I don't have to worry about not identifying or re damage the testicle. And I think this is where you don't have to be microscopically trained to do this procedure now. Now, um, well, a couple of other things that are incorporated with uh, I want to present to you about robotic microsurgery in other arenas, other than the infertility or varicose selectomy in this case. Um, I have used uh, the ICG technology to identify the, the cavernous nerves. This is, a this is between the prostatectomy and what we have here is I'm trying to save the nerve, neovascular bundles. And what I use is use the ICG technology to identify the neovascular bundle so I don't have to damage the vessels where the nerves are. This is how I do it now. And this is something that I think uh, you can say is microscopic surgery. <coughs> Furthermore, um, in terms of uh, plastic surgeons, you guys use nerve, nerve grafts, um, perhaps with the uh, uh, serial nerve, whatever nerves it may be. This is a uh, robotic prostatectomy. We're doing, uh, I'm using the advanced isogar, excuse me, advanced, uh, advanced nerves to, uh, to do nerve graft when, when we cannot save the nerves. And this is uh, pretty much like microscopic surgery. And then um, I'm, uh, I, I like to present this next year here. Um, I have my first 150 patients. Um, I'm trying to get the data together so I can um, present it. Sorry, this is raw, raw, raw video. It's not very good. Anyways. Um, so I think there's a lot of potentials in using this technology, using the robot to do microscopic surgery, not just for infertility and urology, a lot of things that we're doing right now that's, that are very exciting. Thank you.